They were all great, obviously. Um, but I go back to probably a game that I scored in uh, at Ibrox. We went behind early doors. We ended up winning the, the game 3-2, but probably my favourite because I managed to score in that, in that particular game. Um, I have to say it was probably the one uh, that put us into the semi-final of the Scottish Cup. So at Celtic Park, myself and Chris played up top together. Henrik must have been injured. Big Marvin Andrews at the back for Rangers. Kloss in goal. I just peeled away and I got the winning goal on the day, 2-1. And I think it put us in the semis. Scottish Cup, I just signed a new contract as well. It was at Celtic Park and we won the game 2-1. Out of all 18 or 20, whatever, that was probably the one. But you always enjoy them when you win them, Craig, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you um, want to it win makes them. a difference. Oh, it massive makes a difference. difference! You've got to win them games. There's no, mm. there's no other fixture like it in the world, and 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 that's you know through I guess our experience, but uh, playing with a lot of foreigners also that have come from all parts of the world, South America, you know, with the Boca River Plate derbies, and and everyone talks about this game as being the biggest derby that they've ever been involved in. Uh, for me, it was no different, and I think that that's what really makes it special. Again, I agree with Craig. Uh, I've been lucky enough, like Craig has, I, I played in the North London Derby, Arsenal Spurs, I played in the Midlands one, West Brom Wolves, um, West Ham, Millwall, England, Wales. But for me, there's not a derby like this. There really isn't. And I think when you listen to the like, ex-managers, ex-players, senior players who've played all over the world in huge derbies, they always come back, come back to, it. to this particular game. So. I, I, I share the same views. Uh, there is no bigger derby in world football, in my opinion. Somebody else might tell you another derby, but for me, this is the big one. I'll tell you what, I, nah, pretty much Mitch. I, I never used to sleep. It was just one of those games. I mean, the build-up isn't isn't the day before. It's it's a week, two weeks before, you know, that everyone is, is right on it. Um, the game is spoken about. So, so therefore it plays in your mind over and over again and, and I was probably a big one for, for trying to visualise visualize how a game would, would hopefully play out um, and it normally meant uh, no sleep, <laughs> which wasn't great. But go into that game and I tell you what, you wake up pretty quickly, don't you? Oh, you do, yeah. <laughs> but for me it was a case of um, just getting mentally prepared for it, the noise, um, getting mentally prepared for what it means what it means to obviously the Celtic side of the the green and heart, the green and white side of uh, the, the the fan base um, and hoping that somebody would just do something special on the day which meant that you know we, we would win the game um, and vice versa you're hoping that Rangers don't turn up and you're hoping that you know you get on top because you you you're you're reminded of it leading up to the game by supporters and you know, um, so for me, it was just getting mentally prepared for what was going to be an almighty battle. And John touches on something special. It's the type of game that, that, that throws up special, yeah. silly, unpredictable. It's just, it's one of those can't matches, you know, it. anything can happen. Absolutely, you just can't call it. Oh, you know what, as I got a little bit older, um, the party's never happened. I think the most sensible thing to do after an old firm match is win or lose is, is to stay indoors. Um, yeah. You know, unfortunately, you find some trouble. But we weren't, we weren't huh? that sensible. <laughs> we're, <but they're, laughs> we're a little bit younger. We've got more sensible now. Yeah, oh, we there, were, there were a few nice parties, but again, mid-season is very, very difficult, you know, yeah. to, to really go and enjoy the result <clears> because there's a game just, just around the corner. Cup finals, slightly different. Um, you really got the opportunity, I guess, after uh, you know success in the, the cup competition to, to let the hair down a little bit. Yeah, one or two, of, uh, uh, and of course, when you won, uh, you, you you wouldn't go out if you'd lost because one, you didn't want to get involved in in obviously the the celebrations, and also it wouldn't be the right thing to do if you bumped into Celtic fans. Do you know what I mean? So for me, it was always um, the one time my dad came up. My dad came up from Wales. And uh, we won the game. I, sc I scored a goal, and then we ended up just going out. Me and my dad, and we, you know, we had right few beers, just father and son, and it was great just to be with him. We went to a local pub somewhere where I lived, uh, out in um, out in Lanarkshire way, and uh, and that was that really. Uh, so for me, it was just sitting there with my dad, just taking it all in, just unwinding, you know. 
they all hurt when you lose uh, in the, in this actual match. Um, does one actually stand out more than than any other? Uh, for me, it's, um, I'm hard pushed. Like I said, you just know what it means to you know to both sets of supporters, and um, you know everything's on the line for that particular match. So whenever you're on the losing side, it's a really really sore one to take for you personally. Um, for your teammates and most importantly the, the supporters who they, they love come um, you know come Monday they love those bragging rights so it's sore when you don't win so there was plenty uh, I guess of uh, you know times I don't know my exact record in terms of played how many won lost um, but they were all sore if you're on the losing side I lost in three semi-finals against Rangers uh, one sorry I lost in two finals and a semi-final um, the one final I missed the penalty, and I scored a, 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 a perfectly good goal. Is that is that when when I think I maybe played you on on side? Possibly. No VAR. Yeah, no, possibly. No, yeah, no, no, right, no, yeah. no VAR. Eh? Yeah. Eh? It was at that time. Yeah, because that's right. Yeah. I think I've seen you push a few photos every now and then of yeah, I do, me yeah, potentially I'm, playing I'm, your. I'm still oh, better. <laughs> I'm, I'm still better all these years on. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, Missed another, uh, Barry, obviously, another guest of ours here to go radio. Barry Ferguson scored a great free kick. Uh, Rangers beat us 3-2 in the Scottish Cup final. I missed a penalty in the League Cup League Cup final. And then Bert Conterman um, scored a rasping okay. yeah. goal from about 30 yards in the top corner in another semi-final. So I, I lost in a semi-final and two finals to Rangers in my time at Celtic. I don't want to keep bringing that up to the Celtic fans that I got to watch this, but um, that's the reality of it. But the one I felt the most was obviously missing that penalty, because when you miss a penalty, you, you feel as if you've let everybody down, and um, so that was probably the, the worst I felt after the, after playing against Rangers. Yeah. I don't remember. I mean, I, it touches on Bert Quantum, and that was an absolute uh, yeah. topper. I, I remember Arthur Newman scoring a, a decent one from dis distance. But going back even before my time, I think it was a volley. It might have been Ray Wilkins. Um, it, it's just a game that so you, you see some unbelievable goals in this match, and there's they're three that I've kind of mentioned. But the tapping, John, in this one is, is just as special, isn't it? Because oh, of what it actually absolutely. what it actually means um, to, to, to both sides. But um, there's been some special goals. There's no doubt about that. For me, again, Chris, Sus Chris Sutton's lob over Kloss. Um, towards the end of the season fantastic goal the Henry Larson finish where he just chipped it the audacity of it mm. Chris again took defenders where I think it was Ronald De Boer off might have been Frank, Frank. De, Frank De Boer and then um, and then Henrik went through one on one and he just Dinks lobbed it, it over yeah. the digs it up the other one as well was Paul Lambert with a half volley I think about I think it might have been 19 year 2000 yeah, or 99 yeah, yeah. it's come out and he's hit it on the half volley and it's gone right in the stanchion. So, um, yeah, them three is very difficult to say one. But uh, if I had to say one, I'd probably say the Larson one because he was just so calm, so cool, just to dink it over. The crowd went mental. I think that was part of the 5 1. Was it the 5 1 win? Uh, we didn't play that game. No, no, I didn't think so. See the bigger ones, either or. Yeah. I, I, I think I, I was think Rangers, away come to, <laughs> Rangers beat Celtic 5 1. And then I think that in, happened, in, yeah. in the same there season, something might have won 6-2. 6, two. six two something, as well. something like that, yeah. yeah. Team talks with this one, um, you know, oh, we didn't really get the motivational kind of team talks. Maybe a little bit under Walter, uh, Walter Smith. Um, but, you know, when you, when you started to get the, um, you know, Dick Avocat days where it was a, it was a lot more controlled, um, it's, it's a game that the players, are, it's actually trying to manage and, and keep them calm and keep the emotions in check. Um, you know, I played with some players. You go back to, to likes of uh, John Brown and Ian Ferguson back in the day when you know they want to run through walls and they're slapping their face and trying to slap yours before you go out for one of these kind of ma matches. I think the most important thing for this match is um, to not play it in the in the tunnel. Uh, it, it's to make sure that you go out and and come that first whistle, energy is good, mind is good, uh, and that you go out and, and give it your best. Mm. It's almost like a theory of a, th a theory of play the match, not the occasion, because yeah. it's so easy um, to be dragged into the occasion, what it means, the noise, everything else. And Martin used to say, Gordon Strachan, just go out there, you're good players, trust in your fellow pros, 
um, go and do your jobs. And the more the more of us that can get the better of the you know direct opponent. If we got more players to do that, you that team will probably go on and generally win the game. But keep your cool. Discipline as well was always Big huge um, because you can easily dive into a tackle. All of a sudden, your team's down to ten men becomes very very difficult then so discipline was a big one and uh as i said you know trust in your trust in your teammates and um and go and win ultimately you've got to win these games <laughs> go out and, and and give it everything that you've got uh, it's a type of game where uh, leave nothing out there uh, we're at a stage of the season now where this this particular match um is huge you know it's the titles on the line uh, with with this match so you know rangers will go in feeling disappointed after the the last old firm match uh, where celtic were you know convincing winners but they have the opportunity at home but like i said i think both you know both sets of players don't leave anything out there it's one of those ones where you got to you got to give it everything that you've got um and once you've once you've done that and you know if you can't go any longer then you've got a subs bench that can go on and make an impact in these type of matches as well what I'd say to the players is go and embrace it, enjoy it. Look, look at us too, you know, reminiscing. It, your career, it goes so fast. Yeah. This is a fantastic game. It's a brilliant fixture um, shown all over the world. It's a real showcase as well for, for uh, Scottish football. So go and enjoy it. Um, you know, stay calm. I, I just mentioned there, be disciplined. Don't fly into any tackles in the first five minutes where your studs up. Give the referee a chance to Not send like we you used off. to do back in the oh, day. Exactly. <laughs> well, you could get away with a couple back then. I've still got the scars on my calf from Craig. But uh, no, as I said, um, enjoy it. And of course, uh, give everything, as Craig just alluded to. Probably no regrets. Um, would have I loved to have played a lot more of those matches? Um, you're damn tootin' I would have, you know, because they were they were so special. Uh, you know, we touch on that they're shown all over the world. Um, you know, Rangers and Celtic have massive following. They're global, so that exposure um, would have loved to have played a lot more. I think the one for me was when Henrik chucked me the ball in the semi-final and said, take that penalty <laughs> in the final, sorry, in the League Cup. I should have yeah. just chucked it back to him yeah. and said, you take it. But uh, other than that, slot it inside of Kloss's post rather than outside. But I suppose you can't look back. You know, all you got, the, all you can c control is what happens in the future. Um, but great days, great days played against Rangers, great memories, and uh, they're fantastic occasions. Tell Alexa to launch Go Radio or listen on the Go Radio app.